Today we're at Chapelle St. Agnes in Sutton, Quebec. But being here, you feel like you're in a vineyard in some part of Europe. What they specialize in is called ice wine. John Antony is one of the directors here. He's going to explain to us the process of making ice wine. And later, his mother Henrietta is actually going to talk to us about her vision and how her dream became a reality. And there's John. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. Welcome to Chapelle St. Agnes Vineyard. Thank you very much. It is breathtaking. Absolutely breathtaking here. Have some of our very own ice wine. Uh, I have never had ice wine. Did I tell you that? No. Never. So I'm excited to try this. And I hear it's a lot sweeter than regular wine. It is sweeter. It's a dessert wine. But uh, this is very well balanced with acidity. And as, mm. as you're tasting, you, you, you can see. And it's a lighter, more elegant ice wine, and yet with a lot of complexity and a very long finale. So you were telling me there's four different varieties here. Yes, uh, for the ice wine, we, we have a Riesling, Vidal, we have Gewürztraminer, mm -hmm. and we also have Geisenheim. And they're all thick-skinned uh, white varietals that hang on the vine very well. And uh, they're excellent for doing an ice wine harvest, where, whereby the, the grapes are frozen on the vine in winter and you pick them as they're frozen and at, a, at about a temperature of about 14 degrees Fahrenheit. How many acres of vineyard do you actually have? We have uh, only about seven acres. We, uh, we have uh, 4,000 vines here and 3,000 on the other side of the road, so 7,000 in total. And I must say, just the short time I've been here today, it doesn't matter where you are on your property, there mm. is an exquisite view. Oh yes, photographer's paradise here. Absolutely. And also, when we first came in, I was looking around at the structures and it looks so old. But you're going to prove me wrong on that, aren't you? It's banking brand new. I can't believe that. All of that. these structures, except for the barn, which is the sole original structure standing, are uh, Cave Avant, our wine cellars. It's a wonderful medieval style, very well done. We have our banquet hall, which is a Renaissance style. And uh, of course we have our chapel, which yes. is a Romanesque style done by our uh, French compagnons. They're uh, French stonemasons. Well, let's start in the vineyard here because this is where it all begins with the grapes, right? Sure. Okay. Well, this is uh, our Gewürztraminer and it's a noble varietal uh, from Alsace, Germany. And uh, the grapes are very well oh, hidden. Oh, there they are. Yeah, they're very well hidden on the Gewürztraminer. But if you look at our uh, hybrid Vidal, which is a classic for ice wine too, you could see the, the grapes are very, very visual. You, you, right. you see them right away, but they grow a lot of Vidal in Ontario. It's a classic for ice wine. And uh, it, it, it's just wonderful. As a table wine, it, it's not known to be spectacular, but as a nice wine, that that's, this is its niche. This is it's, its niche. The ice yes. wine. And the difference with the grapes are, you were telling me earlier, they have a thicker skin. Yes. And they're very tough. They don't fall down too easily. And they're excellent for uh, an ice wine harvest, the type of ice wine harvest that we have here, which is in the winter. And you don't pick until December, you were telling That's me. That's right. Uh, this is the, the old style of ice wine harvesting, uh, a real ice wine. And we will pick in the traditional format. What's the maintenance like for something like this? Yeah. There are no big tractors that could even go through the, the rows here. Uh, so we're doing a lot of work by hand, like taking off all the laterals, you use all organic sprays here, don't you? Uh, yes, we do. We, we don't use any pesticides, herbicides, synthetic fungicides. And then how do you deal with the cold climate? Does that work for you or against you? Well, the cold climate, it is a challenge. But uh, we have so many large rocks. We have 18 stone terraces in the vineyard. So many large rocks that really keep the heat keep units in. in. So it's, a, it's an endo, special endoclimate for the region here. And we have a very uh, sandy, gravelly soil, which is well-drained. Also, it's a very good level of altitude here. Uh, we could avoid a lot of frosts in May, which are the, the very dangerous frosts. What do you call this structure here? Well, these are the new uh, wine cellars, and we have all of our facilities in there. You have a lot of weddings here as well, don't you? Oh, yeah. It's an excellent site for, for weddings here. And uh, of course, the, the chapel is a, is a wonderful uh, wedding ceremony site, but also at the very bottom of the vineyard where you get a wonderful prospect view. And then you have a beautiful reception room in here. Oh, yes. And it's good for about 150 people for our events. 
Henrietta, hello. How oh, are hello. you? It's I'm a pleasure. <laughs> now you are John's mother. Yes, I am. And this vineyard is here because of you. Right. This is your vision. What was your inspiration? Uh, well, what inspired me, you see, I'm from southern Moravia, where the first vineyards were planted by the Roman legionnaires in the third century. And since that time, vineyards, that's something that we have under our skin, and we are all wine positive. <laughs> yes, that is exactly true. I believe that for a fact. I always was pining for a, to have a vineyard of my own. And now I have it. And now, now I you have, have it. it. Yes. And then also in the distance, we can see that beautiful chapel. It looks it like it's been there for hundreds of years, but I know otherwise. I know, because it was built by the Compagnons de Devoir, which are the highly trained people that are trained to restore the historical monuments in France. And when I told them that I want medieval walls, they knew exactly what I'm talking about. So why did you decide to put a chapel here? Well, I had to house the artifacts which I started to collect at the start of a quiet revolution here in uh, Quebec. And they were what I see as art and as historical pieces representing certain period of, of the life of a, of a country. So I decided that before I become completely gaga, I'm going to build it a home. <laughs> Here we are. Well, Henrietta, I think that you've done good so far. It was a pleasure. It was wonderful to have you. I'm going to go find John and get some more tasting of the wine. <laughs> <laughs> this is the pressing room, and this is our hydraulic press. It's, uh, it's a very strong press, hydraulic, and it has to be, because remember, for ice wine, for the harvest, the grapes are picked at uh, about 14 degrees Fahrenheit, so they're hard as marbles. So forget about naked feet uh, stomping on these I guys. was going to ask you if you ever saw I Love Lucy where they're stomping the grapes. I even wore my flip-flops well, today for you. I remember that scene. It looked like a lot of fun. Didn't it? Don't try it with okay. ice wine. So how does this work for you? What we do is um, in, the, in the winter when we we're doing the uh, harvest of the ice wine, we'll open up all four of these doors. We'll roll out the press right to the edge. We really want to keep the grapes are hard, pretty cold and hard. And once it's filled with in, in the barrel, we'll start squeezing it with the hydraulic press and uh, we, we obtain a very rich nectar. And from that nectar, very concentrated, we make the ice wine, we start fermenting it. Okay, and then how long do you let it ferment? Uh, with us, it's uh, about two, three years. Sometimes after like almost three years in the vat, it's reasonably clear and sometimes we don't even have to filter it. And without filtering it, you know, there's even more taste and uh, bouquet to it. So it's not a very big operation. And for all intents and purposes, today we're doing a wine that only takes about three people. Oh well, yeah, it's very artisanal today. Uh, we're doing our Vendu Naturel and uh, it's kind of like a rosé color. Uh, we add a lot of our white varietals in there. And here we have the milker. She's going to take the balls, she's going to hand them to me, and I'm going to start corking. So when you're bottling, how many do you typically do at one time? Well, uh, let's say for uh, this sort of bottling, which is really a smaller uh, bottling, we'll bottle maybe about uh, 800 bottles or so. And then at the end, you obviously do labels, right? Yes, uh, we label them later, as uh, you know, just before we want to sell them, because they are in the uh, in the wine cellars. We've got a bottle of Riesling ice wine, and uh, it's clear. It's being filtered. It's for the high-end restaurant market. But uh, I have something here. This is our Gewurz, Gewurz Straminer ice wine, and it's unfiltered. You can see the deposit, deposit at the bottom. So yes. that's not a good thing. Well, for a connoisseur, it's a good thing because there's even more taste. To and anybody it's else, clear, they know? might be, what the heck is that? Oh, in that's my right. Wine. I know, I know. All right, well, let's, let's take open. those upstairs, shall oh, okay. we? And go to the tasting room now. So earlier we tried the Cuvée Majorique. Okay. And that was an assemblage of four of our ice wine varietals. Okay. This is a sole varietal. It's Vidal. It's a classic. They grow a lot of it for ice wine in Ontario. Now, how does this one wine. differ as far as taste? You'll be tasting a little bit of um, uh, plums, prunes, fig, Ooh. apple. 
Now, before I get addicted to this, how much more expensive is ice wine compared to regular wine? It's more expensive. You know, there's, there's more risk to it, and it's so much more concentrated. Right. Well, thank you for spending the day with us, Sean. Let's You're end quite on welcome. a taste of your wine. Cheers. Thanks for having us. You're quite welcome.